Yeah, I had a question about hadith. You have, uh, can you, uh, are you, where are you coming from, by the way? It's from Canada. Okay, you Christian Joe? Uh, no, I'm atheist. You're atheist? Yeah. Atheist interested in hadith is interesting, but anyway, yeah. yeah What's because, your uh, Basically, I was wondering, the Muslims use hadith as like authority, right? For like rulings and stuff even though it's not like a preserved word of God. And there's oftentimes like contradictions in it. No, who said that's in contradiction in it? Like sometimes like, for example... The authentic hadith, the authentic hadith it doesn't have contradictions, but they have, there are some obligations, there are certain things to reconcile between them. The authentic hadith, generally they don't have contradictions. I just can't, I'm just rectifying this to you. Okay, because like I heard there's like one hadith about like um like uh Tami Madari about like um like he was on like a boat and he saw like a beast or yes. something like and it's like contradicts. So I was wondering yes. like if there's contradictions like this, how can Muslims take that as authority? No, no now here that first of all that hadith again some scholars, well, they have some, some discussions about it from the scholars of Islam about it. That when Tamir Dari, when he was in a boat and he saw basically the Antichrist, and he was a giant man in, in an island in a, in a kind of a church being chained, being uh, locked in chains uh, in that area. This is something which is, which is uh, what is the contradiction with that compared to, to some other things? What's the contradiction with that? Like I heard there's other like narrations where like um, he was born, like the Jaw was born and then he's grown up and stuff like that. And so no. for him to have already seen him as an adult, it's like a contradiction. Again, that, that hadith, again, the school, some scholars, they have the they're commentators of the hadith, if you see. They already wrote books about it, by the way. And some who, who took the position of that that hadith is authentic to say actually, yes, um, that he was already there. And the other hadith of uh, of uh, the other hadith, which is about the, that child or that boy, who was born in Medina, etc. Most of them are not authentic. Basically, most of that. So that's why it's not necessarily the case how how, how the people are seeing it. At the end of the day, we believe there is someone who's Antichrist, who's what we call it, the Dajjal, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi We believe in his description that he has one eye, one eye is working, the other eye is like blind. Uh, and we believe as well that he is uh, uh, a disbeliever and someone who's going to be doing certain things that will make the people to believe he is God, etc. will do some, some kind of miracles, but he is just only a Dajjal, basically a, a false uh, a false person, basically. Someone who's, who spread falsehood. Now, it doesn't matter if he was there in that island or if he wasn't in that island, etc., there are some commentators of that hadith, by the way, who says not necessarily the hadith of Tamim al-Dari, that the Prophet sallallahu it was that what he narrated, the Tamim al-Dari. And as well, some of them, they said that the Prophet sallallahu has warned against, uh, you know, has warned against the Dajjal. That's the main thing. The main thing about that story, to, to, to abstain from the Dajjal and, to, uh, and not to follow the misguidance of the... Uh, you know, evil doers, including the Dajjal. That's the meaning of the hadith, basically. And like, my main point is, like, how can you take something that's not God's word as, um, like, you know, for now, your we, we need to understand that the hadith, it means that either the saying or action or approval of the Prophet wasallam. And we believe our Prophet wasallam doesn't speak out of his own desire. Everything that he speaks from revelation. So Allah revealed to him the Quran and revealed to him as well the Sunnah, his authentic Sunnah. So the same as we accept the Quran, we have to accept the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu That's how we understand Islam. So that's a key thing in our understanding to Islam. So we we believe that action is from God, that whatever the Hadith, the authentic Hadith from God, because there is nothing happens from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, none of his saying. None of his actions, none of his approval, except Allah. If it was, uh, if it was either that Allah directly revealed to the Prophet ﷺ to do certain things, or something that the Prophet of Allah ﷺ will do it, and Allah affirms it by not go. But uh, and if Allah doesn't affirm it, then Allah will rectify it. Basically, that's why again goes back to that Allah ﷺ preserving 
The same how Allah preserved the Quran, Allah preserved the hadith as well, the authentic hadith. You understand? Okay. So the hadiths are like perfectly preserved, like the Quran? Yeah, they are perfect because the same people who narrated the hadith, they are the same people who narrated the, the Quran. The same people who narrated the Quran are the same people who narrated the hadith, basically. Oh, okay. So that's why it is kind of preserved generally. But the Quran has higher status as it is the recited one, the way that Allah recited it, the way that Allah said it. The way that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, said it as well, and to be recited as, and we worship Allah for reciting the Quran, that's the Quran. But in relation to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, not necessarily we have to recite it, but it's some kind of understanding to the Quran and the implementation of the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Is that clear? Yeah, thank you. No problem. It's good, but I advise you to read more about the Quran. It will be more helpful for you. Okay. All right. Uh, we have 